Here's a circle with radius 1. Centre is the origin. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. And I have a radius line of length 1 that I start rota rotating. Its zero position, if you like, is along the x-axis. And th this gives me a positive angle of rotation. When I rotate it anti-clockwise, the angle is positive. So starting position zero, I'm going to rotate it 30 degrees to that position. Let's draw that position in. The end of the radius line, uh, this point here, has coordinates approximately is 0 0.9, 0 0.5. In my previous video, I explained that the x-coordinate gives you the cosine of this angle of rotation. So the cosine of 30 is approximately 0 0.9 to one decimal place. And the sine of 30 is this y-coordinate, 0 0.5. So cosine of 30 is approximately 0 0.9, sine of 30, 0 0.5. Now, there is a several positions for this radius line that are symmetric. And here's the first one. That angle is basically 180 minus, if we, go, if we now go clockwise, we're getting negative angles. So it's 180 minus... 30 degrees for that, 150 degrees. Um, let me draw that uh, position. The end point of the radius line now has coordinates by symmetry of negative 0 0.9 approximately and 0 0.5. This angle of rotation is 150, it's 180 degrees minus the 30 degrees. And the cosine of 150 is minus 0 0.9, which is the negative of the cosine of 30. And the cos the sine of 150 is 0 0.5, exactly the same as the sine of 30. Let's move to another symmetric position, which would be down here. Now, that position is rotating this line by 180 degrees plus 30. So we've got uh, 210 degrees. Let me mark that position in. And this end point has coordinates minus 0 0.9, 0 point, minus 0 0.5. They're both negative this time. And the angle is 180 degrees plus 30. 210 degrees. And this gives the cosine of 180 plus 30, cosine of 210 degrees, same as the cosine of 150 degrees. The sine of 210 degrees is minus 0 0.5. One last position, which is round here, completes what's sometimes called the butterfly diagram for obvious reasons. But to get this angle, let's go all the way around to 360 and backtrack by 30 degrees. So it's 360 minus 30. So let me mark in that position with its end point. It's, 100, it's 360 minus 30. The coordinates here are 0 0.9 approximately, and this time minus 0 0.5. So the cosine of 360 minus 30, the cosine of 330 degrees is 0 0.9, the same as the cosine of 30 degrees, and the sine of 330 degrees is minus 0 0.5, the same as the sine of 210 degrees. So there's a lot can be learnt from this diagram. Um, so let's look at a few basic trig equations. Suppose we're asked to solve sine x equals 0 0.5. And always with these equations you'll get a range of values uh, for the angle. 
all the cases. I'm going to use it's between 0 and 360 so that we cover all four quadrants. It's the first quadrant, second, third and fourth quadrants. It's the order that the line from its resting position passes through in its rotation round the circle. So first, second, third and fourth quadrants. Um, sine of an angle is 0 0.5. If we look at this diagram, 30 degrees would suit the bill. That's your first quadrant. The y coordinate here gives the, the sine of the angle of rotation. So sine of 30 is 0 0.5. That also happens in this position where we've got 180 minus 30, which is 150 degrees. So the other value would be 180 minus 30. That's the second quadrant. And you may recall that uh, on this diagram, you can put these letters in. Basically, this says that all the three trig functions, sine, cos, tan, are positive in here. Only the sine's positive. There's the sine, and the cosine is negative. Remember, the tan comes from sine divided by cos. So positive divided by negative is negative. The tan and the cos are both negative in here. Sine is the only positive one. So sine x equals 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is positive. We will have two answers in the range 0 to 360. First quadrant and second quadrant. That's the only two quadrants where the sine is positive. So 30 or 180 minus 30, which is 150. Similarly, if we're solving sine of an angle equals negative 0 0.5, again in the, the same range that covers all four quadrants, this time sine being negative, we're in the third and the fourth quadrants. Remember, the sine is the y-coordinate. Uh, so in this case, third quadrant is 180 plus 30, which is 210. Or fourth quadrant, all the way around 360 minus the 30 to get to this position, where the sine, the y-coordinate, is negative 0 0.5. So 360 minus 30 giving you 330 degrees. Similarly, let's, let's look at the couple with the cosine. The cosine of x equals positive 0 0.9, approximately 0 0.9. And again, same range covering all four quadrants. Cosine's positive. Now, the cosine is the x-coordinate. So this is the first and the fourth quadrants, these two positions. So we'll get two solutions, x equals 30, or the fourth quadrant all the way around to 360, backtrack by 30 degrees, minus 30, to get to this position where the x coordinate is exactly the same as the first quadrant position with the 30. So 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. So first quadrant and fourth quadrant. Similar, similarly, cosine of x being minus 0 0.9, uh, in the same range, 0 to 360, we would have second quadrant and third quadrant. The x-coordinate, the cosine of this angle of rotation, x-coordinate in both cases is negative, not positive. First and fourth positive, second and third negative. So the second quadrant angle, remember we rotate all the way around to 180 and backtrack by 30. So it'll be 180 minus 30, which is 150. Or um, the third quadrant angle, 180 degrees plus that 30. So 180 plus 30, giving us 210 uh, degrees. So that's basically how we solve these simple trig equations using the unit circle diagram.